One more easy thing I want to explain that is the angle issue. The prototype is a triangular area. This angle is alpha, this angle is beta, that angle is gamma. This length is A, that length is B and that length is C. Again capital A, capital B and capital C are several kilometer. I cannot have kilometer long clay layer in the laboratory, so I will take centimeter long layer. So, I will choose a smaller triangle as model where A, B and C will be maintained. What will be the relation between capital A, B, C and small a, B, C? As I told you just now, as per geometric similarity principle, I have to maintain this relationship. And I can repeat that capital A B C length I have no control, whereas in the laboratory I have full control on small a, small b and small c lengths. What about the angles? That is why I was talking here. This angle has to be same as alpha. Do not change the angle. No ratioing is done. This is beta. So, this is has to be beta. That angle has to be gamma. Okay. So, with lengths we are doing the ratioing, but with angles we keep things as it is between the prototype and the model. For example, we were I was drawing a rectangular study area and then I have also drawn a rectangular model. Did I change the angle? All the angles were here 90 degrees and also in the model they were 90 degrees. So, do not do ratioing with the angles, maintain the same angular relationships. In dynamic similarity there are four issues. What are those issues? Number one, the issue of density. Number two, the issue of viscosity. So, that is why I introduce to the geology students what is viscosity. Here you see the term has come. The issue of Reynolds number. That is why I have already defined what is a Reynolds number. And number four, the issue of force. I write forces. Okay. Let us see the dynamic similarity issue starting from the easy ones density. Say in your study area, it is not just one single rock layer, but there are two rock types quite common sandstone shale alteration, sandstone columnomite alteration shell mudstone alteration or an igneous intrusion has come. There can be two or more layers of course, that can be deformed. Let us say this is my rock type P and this is my rock type Q and this length is let us say I write as capital A. Let us say this length is capital B. Further I write down this length is capital C. So, so, for the rock P, the thickness is B minus C, for rock Q, the thickness is C and the length, uh, the, so rather the width are like that B minus C and C and the length is A. So, this is our prototype and let us look at the model. Here since there are two rock types, I need two soft deformable materials, so that I can properly mimic the deformation pattern. So, here I will take P dash and Q dash as the two model materials, maybe clays of different hardnesses, maybe one is clay, another is polydimethylsiloxane, or maybe one can be octachloropropane. Now, say this rock P has a density 
rho p and this has a density rho q. Now, rho p and rho q, how do I find out? For the rocks, I can take a piece of a rock and by coming to the laboratory, by immersing in water, calculating how much volume of water it is displacing, then weighing the samples, finally we can find out the density values of these two rocks. Now, on this point, sometimes argument comes that rocks can have heterogeneity. So, how can a single piece of rock represent the density of the entire layer? So, on this there can be a separate discussion, how to find out the representative density in theory and also in practice. For time being think that by some way we know that this rock layer P has a density rho P, the rock layer Q has a density rho Q and we have no control on them, nature has created, we can find out. Whereas, for take the clear layers that we have taken, we can take choose density rho p dash and rho q dash in such a way that a ratio is maintained. What is that ratio? The ratio is rho p by rho q, rho p by rho q for the real rock for the prototype is equal to rho p dash by rho q dash, rho p dash by rho q dash or I can write in this way, this is for the prototype, this ratio is for the model. We have no control on rho p and rho q values, we can at best find out in the real rock, whereas we have full freedom of find of choosing the soft deformable material of rho p dash and rho q dash density in such a manner that this is maintained. And from here, we can of course, write down alternately as this by this equal to that by that. We can write if we require rho p by rho p dash is equal to rho q by rho q dash. Okay. So, what we I demonstrated with the two layers will also be true for more than two layers, three, four layers. Similarly, ratioing can be made. So, that was the issue of density. Now, we are going to see the issue of viscosity and for more than one rock unit, how the viscosity will be taken care all and all four under the umbrella of dynamic similarity. Here the approach is very similar to what we did for density. Let us say this rock unit has a viscosity mu p and a viscosity mu q and for the soft deformable material, let us say its viscosity is mu p dash and this viscosity is mu q dash. <coughs> okay. Now, mu p and mu q nature has created whatever we are observing and somehow we are measuring directly or indirectly. Mu p dash and mu q dash, we have full freedom of choosing clay in such a manner that we choose specific magnitudes or ratio of mu p dash and mu q dash. What is the specific way? That specific way is mu p by mu q is equal to has to be equal to mu p dash by mu q dash. So, this one is for the prototype and this one is for the model for the prototype values, those are for the model values. Again, we can write from here if we want mu p by mu p dash is equal to mu q by mu q dash. So, what we did for two layers, similarly we can take consider three or four layer or n number of layers if required layer rocks become important in some of the models. For example, the saddle and reef geometry of the fold where there are rocks of different layers. You compress one layer gets more folded another is less folded. In between there is a gap saddle and reef geometry is produced where hydrocarbon might be there. So, this is what the issue of viscosity and that was the reason I was talking about the viscosity issue. I repeat here that mu p and mu q nature has produce the rocks, we can have direct or indirect ways of finding out the viscosities of the rocks. Now, this is bit confusing. Rocks are so called solid materials. What about the viscosity of the rock? 
we said viscosity term comes from the Newtonian viscous fluid. Are all rocks Newtonian viscous fluid? That is debated, but one thing is for sure. In a very long range of time, everything is fluid. All materials at very large scale of time So, that means, I am fluid and the persons who are watching, they are also fluid. In what way? Let us say, here is a piece of rock which is standing. In my lifetime, it will be standing like that, but if I were so lucky to live millions or billions of years, I would have seen that this rock due to its own weight has spread like that. Due to its own weight, any so called solid will spread in these directions, what it wants, what is the material's intention? The intention is that the center of gravity over here for this rectangle wants to reach the earth's core. So, this by its own gravitational collapse, this center of gravity comes down little bit. It wants to reach the earth's core, but it can never reach because there is a surface. So, what is the future of such a material? Again, spend some more billions of years. This material will flow like that, is more spreaded. Where is the center of gravity now? The center of gravity is over here. So, the material keeps on spreading infinitely and the center of gravity once comes closer and closer to this surface. So, what is the future? Infinitely long spreaded material and the center of gravity very close to the surface, but not touching the surface. So, in that way everything is fluid, all so called solids are fluids. Rocks are solids over a short time span and this what I have demonstrated certainly in experiments we cannot do in the laboratory. In my lifetime I cannot demonstrate that a rock is flowing, but geologists do find out evidence of gravitational spreading or gravitational collapse in terms of the nap structures. This is the gravitational spreading. Due to its own weight, the body is collapsing. Salt domes sometimes undergo gravitational spreading, what the geoscientists have interpreted. Okay. So, back to the point, all so called solids are basically fluids, fluids of very high viscosity. When the viscosity is very, 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 very high, then the material is practically solid. For example, we wrote stress is proportional to strain rate. And from here we wrote stress is equal to viscosity multiplied by strain rate. Now, if this mu value goes very high, then this equation will approximate to a solid equation. This will approximate to Young's modulus multiplied by strain. So, strain rate is gone. When the mu is very high, we can think this fluid property approximates as a solid property. Where do you see any other evidence of gravitational spreading? It has been said that in old churches in Europe, there are evidences in the glass in the window, the glass is thinner in the top, thicker at the bottom. So, that means glass has flown down over last so many hundreds of years. But there is another argument that says that those glasses are manufacturing defect. So, this was about the viscosity. One question comes to students mind, how do I measure the viscosity of the real rock? How do I find out the viscosity of the real rock? It is behaving like a solid in the laboratory, I can find out the Young's modulus. So, to do that, I would just write down my mail ID over here. Those of you who are watching and want to know the detail, I will send you research papers. This is my mail id. Or if I write in all caps,
So, but what about the model soft material? How to find out their viscosities? We have an instrument called viscometer. It can be found in the chemical engineering or mechanical engineering departments where you can take the clay material or the PDMS and ask the instrument person to give the value within few hours you can get the value. So, I have finished the density issue and the viscosity issue. Now, I am going to the third issue of dynamic similarity that is called the issue of Reynolds number. Let us consider a prototype. Twenty kilometer long, ten kilometer wide. Let us say the base is static and I shear this rock has undergone a simple shear or non coaxial shear with some rate, slow rate, three millimeter per year. So, if it is a rectangle, if I shear it will become parallelogram. From there, we can find out this half arrow, we can make out in the field that in the past in this way the rock has slided. So, we know about it from shear sense indicators. How do I find out the rate of shearing? Again, through geochronological studies it is possible to do. The geological shear in the rock is usually at a very low rate, couple of millimeter per year is the usual rate and when we say fast rate of shearing centimeter per year. So, I can write here centimeter per year of slip is a fast rate in structural geology. Few centimeter per year and commonly this is usually we find out from the geochronological studies. But do not think that all geological processes are slow. For example, if there is a landslide within one second there can be one meter of movement, it is possible. Within one second there can be this much of displacement of the rock. A piece of rock breaks during landslide and falls faster rate, certainly it is much much faster than centimeter per year. It is like an invisible rate to a common man's eye centimeter per year. Now, this deformation I want to simulate in the laboratory. First thing I will do is I will maintain a geometric similarity, I will take a clay layer. Let us say this will be 20 centimeter long and 10 centimeter wide. The moment it is done, we say that this model is geometrically similar with the prototype because you see 20 kilometer by 20 centimeter is equal to 10 kilometer by 10 centimeter or in other words 20 kilometer by 10 kilometer is equal to 20 centimeter by 10 centimeter. So, geometric similarity is done. Now, since a rate is given we are thinking of Reynolds number. We have to find out in this kind of deformation how much is the Reynolds number in the prototype. So, I can write R E P remember the formula and that is why we were writing earlier rho V d by mu V said what is the density of the rock? Let us say we pick up a piece of rock if not from mantle source if from the crustal source let us say 2.4 gram per centimeter cube. The CGS unit or if I convert it into an MKS unit it will become Okay. So, the Reynolds number we will calculate in this case like this rho is 2.4 multiplied with the velocity 3 millimeter per year. Now, this is not a CGS unit because millimeter and year neither of them are CGS unit. So, I will convert it into CGS unit I will write down V for that 3 millimeter, but I need to write from here I think. So, I start from here is equal to 2.4 multiplied by 3 millimeter means 3 by 10 centimeter. 
per year. Each year has got 365 days except leap year. But even if I put 366, the result will not vary much. Each day has got 24 hours. Each hour has got 60 minutes. And each minute has got 60 seconds. So, the V value 3 millimeter per year is this term. D is the diameter. Now, we are not dealing with a cylindrical medium through which fluid is flowing. Approximately, I will take this representative of the D approximately. So, 10 kilometer I will take as 10, this is in kilometer I want to get back all in CGS. So, multiplied by 10 to the power 5. So, this is now in centimeter 10 into 10 to the power 5. So, what I have taken care so far is that I have taken care rho, V and D. The remaining is mu. How much is the viscosity of this rock? Through indirect means let us say we find out the viscosity of this rock is 10 to the power 18 poise and I tell you poise is the CGS unit. So, I will divide since it is divided by mu. So, I will write here multiplied by 10 to the power minus 18. Okay. So, this is the Reynolds number for the prototype which will come out as a extremely small number. Now, the idea is that this Reynolds number has to be matched with the model's Reynolds number. This is a requirement third requirement for the dynamic similarity. To do that well we will of course use some mechanical means of shearing so that similar structures can be reproduced and I can compare them with the prototype. But logically I cannot generate 3 millimeter per year in the laboratory which can through a cheap instrument impossible. Even if it is possible it will be very very expensive if at all. And secondly if 3 millimeter per year is the rate of displacement my experiment will take very very long time so many years. Whereas, in a PhD usually within 5 years we have to finish a master student's thesis has to be finished within 1 year or let us say 6 months. So, looking at this practical difficulty we would not try several millimeter per year we are bound to use a much faster rate let us say 1 centimeter slip per 5 minutes and this is possible. There can be an instrument for which a geologist will consult an engineer and say that I need one such instrument through which I can shear this clay layer with such a rate. This is possible, it will not be very expensive either. So, we want to check Reynolds number in the model comes out how much is this Reynolds number in the model matching with the Reynolds number in the prototype. If they are matching then the dynamic similarity is maintained. Now, let us look at the rock analog that we are experimenting. If I take 10 to the power 18 poise viscosity that means real rock I cannot deform at all in the laboratory. As I told you to deform a rock in a ductile regime we need high pressure high temperature certain fluid activity condition which is too much which is too expensive in the laboratory. So, we will take softer material let us say its viscosity is 10 to the power 6 poise. What about the density of common clay mineral or PD, uh, PDMS? The density can be let us say it was here 2.4 let us say I take 2.2 gram per centimeter cube this is possible maybe 2.4, 2.5 maybe 2.52 etcetera is possible. Now, I want to calculate the Reynolds number in the model again recall the formula rho V d divided by mu. So, what I will do rho 2.2 gram per centimeter cube which, which we can also write at 2200 if you want kg per meter cube. So, it is 2.2 
since I have given one CGS unit over here, I have to give CGS unit for V, D and mu also. V, 1 centimeter per 5 minutes, that means 1 centimeter per 5 into 60 seconds. This 1 centimeter per 5 minutes is equal to so much centimeter per second multiplied by d. I have taken 10 centimeter okay. and then divide by mu 10 to the power 6 is the viscosity of the soft material found through viscometer. Now, I will write here multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6. This is not visible I think. So, I am just writing here multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6. This Reynolds number in the model usually I ask students to calculate and some number comes out. And then I ask the students compare this number with that are they similar, are they same and after calculating they find that there is not at all. Yes, it is very, 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 very small number and it is very, very small number. This is smaller than that, much, much smaller than that. So, in terms of symbol, we can write that Reynolds number in the prototype is much, much smaller than the Reynolds number in the model. I would request those who are watching this video to calculate this number, find out and using a calculator also calculate, you will find this is the scenario. So, the Reynolds number matching between the prototype and the model is not working. Now, here is a strange thing that a structural geologist will do, even though they are very small, but there is dissimilarity, they are practically the same. What does this mean? Suppose I tell you, I will give you 0 0.00000000000001 euro and next day I tell you I will give you 0 0.00001 euro. You will say both are effectively the same and both are very small. So, in that sense very, 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 very small and this is very, very small a practically they are the same. We cannot do anything better than this, but if you can really match them better the model. No doubt about it, the model is much, much better. But this is what a structural geologist with some amount of funding can maximum achieve.